Coming up on Wind News, thousands attend a cultural festival at the Nantian Temple. And diving to new depths, how a South Coast tragedy spawned the perfect playground for divers. It's one of the worst maritime tragedies to have occurred off the New South Wales south coast. Over 60 years ago, the ocean claimed the SS Bombo and the lives of 12 men. Today, the wreck remains a sunken memory for what happened that day, but it won't forever. It's now decaying and divers are running out of time. It's hard to put it into words. It's just, just a buzz good to share with other divers. It's just fascinating, you never get sick of it. It's, it's always fascinating, there's always something different to see every time you dive it. On the 22nd of February 1949, of the 14 men on board the SS Bombo, only two survived. The boat had been transporting blue metal from Kiama to Sydney when a storm hit. Captain Bell tried to turn the boat into Port Kembla for shelter. He never made it. Papers of the day captured a national tragedy. It's a story that still intrigues Peter Fitzpatrick. The southern copper stack, if you kept that behind you with a little chimney in front, kept that line and lined up the telecom tower with Crown Central, when those things met up, you just stopped through the anchor over and 99 times out of 100 you were on there. Peter's father served on the ship when it was used as a minesweeper off Darwin during World War II. When he heard the wreck had been discovered in 1978, he had to see it for himself. He'd dive it over 30 times. We'd just fall over the side there and the wreck would be sort of on the end of the anchor line. Whichever way the boat was pointing, you go down the anchor line. Once you got to the bottom, the anchor line was hooked onto it somewhere. Majestic and mysterious, the Bombo is one of the best known diving wrecks on the south coast. But Peter hasn't seen it in nearly 20 years. A serious injury to his ear while spearfishing means he can no longer descend the 30 metres to the bottom. An absence made even harder by the fact most of his old film has been destroyed and the Bombo is decaying. Pretty sad, like all of us eventually decayed. And <laughs> but at least there's uh, the history of it and artefacts in the museum for all to see. Bombo Beach it is not named after the Bombo shipwreck, it's the other way around. The Bombo ship was named after Bombo Beach and Bombo Beach was an Aboriginal word. Over the years Peter has brought pieces of the ship here to the pilot's cottage in Kiama. So too of others. Portholes, copper piping, lights, chipped dinner plates. All pieces of a larger puzzle getting smaller over time. My favourite thing is a, a key that I like to think is from the captain's chest because we've got the top of the chest and we've got the brass parts of it and we've got the key. And it, it's sort of like a personal item. The pilot's cottage is as close as most of us will ever come to the SS Bombo. Despite his injury, Peter still dreams one day he'll see his old friend again. I often think I'll come and, and give it a go. I have, I have um, gone scuba diving since a couple of years after this healed, but it's, it's always a problem and um, makes you a little bit anxious. I might try it one day, go down nice and slow. Yeah. Museums are not just about the past. I really believe that we are about the future. I want the people in a hundred years time of Kiama Wollongong area of Australia to come here and see these relics. Because one day they'll be the only things left to tell the story. Rob Morrison, Wind News.